Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing Pfizer's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or sell. Pfizer is a pharmaceutical corporation. It is one of the world's largest pharmaceutical companies and ranked 57th largest US company. Pfizer develops and produces medicines and vaccines for a wide range of medical disciplines, including immunology, oncology, cardiology, endocrinology, and neurology. It sells Lipitor, Viagra, Prevnar, and many more drugs. It has also developed a COVID vaccine which was approved in the United Kingdom and yesterday it delivered 800,000 doses. It should be approved in the United States any day now. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 227 billion market cap. They're trading at $41 a share and they have 5.5 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company, you forecast their future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see this company has lots of free cash flow each year. 10 billion to 14 billion dollars a year. That's a lot of free cash flow to work with. Net income is a profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. They also have quite a bit of net income, 21 billion, but it did drop to eight and a half billion in trailing 12 months. And their revenue seems to be decreasing. It was 52 billion in 2017, dropped to 48 billion in trailing 12 months. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue. That was 48 billion in a trailing 12 months. Below that is cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. That was 10 billion. And the gross profit is a difference that was 39 billion. Looks like they had the lowest gross profit in the trailing 12 months. Below that is operating expenses. And then below that is operating income. And that's 13 billion dollars. Also the lowest in the past four years. The company also has a decent amount of debt. So they have to pay interest on their debt. That was 1.5 billion. Then there's other income and expenses. So their pre-tax income was eight and a half billion. So it looks like the company didn't pay any taxes in the trailing 12 months, but this can happen with accrual accounting. If you look last year, they paid 1.4 billion. So they do have pretty healthy net income every single year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. This is how much money the company generates from its operational business. That was 12 and a half billion in the trailing 12 months. And the way you calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow minus CapEx. That was a little over two billion. So their free cash flow was $10 billion in a trailing 12 months. CapEx is investments in property, plant, and equipment. And you can see they issue quite a bit of debt each year, 13 billion, 9 billion, 21 billion, and 32 billion. In 2017 and 18, they paid down as much debt as they issued. But in 2019 and trailing 12 months, it looks like they issued a lot more debt than they paid off. So they are getting more leveraged. They didn't issue any capital stock the past four years, but they did pay down some capital stock, 5 billion, 12 billion, and 8 billion. So far, everything looks good with their financials. Let's look at a capital structure. They have $52 billion of debt and $42 billion of net debt. Net debt is debt minus cash. So if they used all the cash on their balance sheet to pay down part of their debt, they would still have $42 billion of debt left over. They have 63 billion of equity. They pay 3% interest on their debt. And the cost of debt is 2.8%. To calculate cost of debt, it's interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. And 45% of the capital structure's debt, which means 55% is equity. Cost of equity is 7.3%. And they have a low beta, 0.65. A beta of one means the stock moves with the market. That means their stock moves less than the market. It's less volatile than the market. And their WAC is 5.3%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years are future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 267 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $266 billion. We divide that by 5.5 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $48. They're trading at $41, so they're trading at a 15% discount. It's a buy according to the model. 
Simply Wall Street is higher than me, they're at $65, so they're saying the stock is even more undervalued. So you can see the stock was up and down the past five years. It looks like it peaked a couple years ago and then dropped a lot, but it looks like it's coming back up almost above its all-time high. And the company pays a nice dividend, 3.57%. And it looks like they've been raising their dividend each year, 28 cents to 30 cents to 32 to 34. Currently, they're at 36 cents a share. So if the stock price keeps going up, the dividend yield will go down because the way you calculate dividend yield is annual dividend payment over stock price. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and you reinvested the dividends back into this company, you'd have $37,000 today. If you did not reinvest the dividends, you'd have $32,000. This is the company's revenue broken out by location. The United States is about half their revenue. China is close to 10%. Japan is about 8%. And the rest of the world is about one third. The company expects to generate $3.5 billion of revenue from the COVID vaccine. So this should definitely help their revenue in 2021. I think it's highly unlikely the COVID vaccine will benefit their revenue after 2021. Pfizer's top 10 drugs are Prevnar, that's their biggest 5.8 billion in sales. Then other drugs are 5 billion, 4 billion, Lyrica is 3.3 billion, Zelljans is 2.2 billion, Lipitor is 2 billion, 1.7 billion, 1 billion, 1 billion, and a little under 1 billion. The good thing with these drugs is because some of them have been around for many years and they will be for many more years. The COVID vaccine, although it's very important, it's not gonna be around for more than a year or two. Sales of Viagra peaked in 2012 at 2 billion, but you could see it's come down quite a bit. In 2019, it was only 25% of that number. The reason is, is because the company's patent expired in 2012. That gave other drug manufacturers the ability to make a generic version of Viagra. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 13, the median is 15. PE is stock price over earnings per share. They are 26.2, so they're a bit worse than the median average. 26.2 means investors are paying $26.20 for $1 of earnings. The average price of sales is 6.3, the median is 2.0. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 4.7, so they're between the median and average. Average price to book is 3.2, the median is 2.2. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. There are 3.6, so they're a little worse than the average. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet. And their tangible equity is negative $30 billion. So that means they have a lot of intangible assets on their balance sheet. This is the company's balance sheet. They have $168 billion of assets. Assets are broken out between current assets and non-current assets. Current assets are assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. Intangible assets will not appear in current assets. They'll only appear in non-current assets. They have 58 billion of goodwill and 35 billion of other intangibles. A company can only get intangible assets on its balance sheet when they acquire another company. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They're at 8.1, so they can easily cover their interest payments. ROE is net income over equity, they're at 14%, so they're better than the median and average. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, they're at 0.9, so they cannot cover their current liabilities with their current assets. Their current assets are 10 billion of cash, 12 billion of receivables, and 8 billion of inventory. So they do have negative working capital, negative 4.5 billion. Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities, but they're generating enough cash flow, 10 billion in trailing 12 months, to cover that deficit. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on AbbVie, Amgen, AstraZeneca, Biogen, Gilead, GW Pharmaceuticals, Horizon, Johnson & Johnson, Eli Lilly, Merck, and Novartis. All in the same industry as Pfizer. And if Pfizer has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse in price to earnings, price to sales, and price to book. A little worse, not much worse. But they are a lot worse in current ratio, a lot worse in ROE. They're a little lower in debt than average. They have 45%, average is 50%. They're higher in market cap than average. And their dividend is higher than average at 3.5%, average is 2.5%. So to summarize, I do have them trading at a 15% discount because their stock will go up with the COVID vaccine. Plus they have so many other vaccines and medicines in their pipeline. So there's no risk of anything happening with this company. 
Their financials look really good and their ratios look pretty good. Let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.